one. But in the meantime, I'm absolutely delighted to say we can welcome into our studio Eugenie Bouchard. Fantastic to have you in here. And of course, you. you had a great win today. How does it feel to have made your first quarterfinal here at Wimbledon? I'm excited. You know, it was a really tough battle today, so I'm proud of the way I fought. And I think I really stepped up my game at the important moments. And that's what you have to do in such close matches. Yeah, first time on the Senate court? No, I got to play on it last year, but first time playing under the roof, so was it was that? another experience. It was really humid. We were, I think we were both sweating a lot, um, you know, made it definitely hotter in there, but, um, you know, it's, it's an amazing court, so I'm always so happy to play on it. So no. when it's, sorry, when it's humid, can... <laughs> does it slide through? The, does the ball slide through a little bit more? Though? I think it goes a little quicker when, yeah. it, when the roof is closed, uh, but don't, you know, hold me to that, but that's <laughs> what I think, and, uh, you know, which is good for me, because I like to try to take it early and really control the points, so if it's a little bit quicker, I like that. Now, of course, Eugenia, you're the only player in the draw that's made two semi-finals of Grand Slams already this year. Serena Williams is out of the draw. So what is it that's clicking for you in your game uh, at the moment? And how much have you dreamt of perhaps holding that trophy at the end? I have dreamt of it for a long time, you know, ever since I started when I was five years old. Uh, to win Wimbledon, to win a Grand Slam, that's my ultimate goal. So I'm always working each day to try and prove, to try achieve that one day, hopefully. And, uh, you know, I'm really excited. I've put in a lot of hard work over the years, and I think, you know, it's all that time I've spent, you know, working on the court and in the gym, you know, coming to uh, success uh, on the match court. So what made you fall in love with tennis? Were you someone who did other things when you grew up? Did you do ballet or horse riding? What other things did you do and what made you fall in love with tennis? I just loved it from the moment I hit a ball. I really just loved the feeling of, of hitting a ball. And um, I'm a very competitive person as well. So as soon as I played my first tournament, I was really into it and very competitive. And, you know, it's just uh, something I've loved from a very young age so I feel like I've been doing it a long time 15 years now but um, I love it I want to keep going and the style has it always been as aggressive as it is now I don't think it's been quite as aggressive as I try to play now I think in the juniors I was a little bit um, you know a little bit less aggressive but I think it's important to, to try have weapons against the big players and um, I like to take it early try to control the point with my serve and try to attack on the return as well so um, I try to try to really dominate and how have you adapted to the grass courts? Because, of course, it is such a different surface. There can't have been too many grass courts where you grew up <laughs> in Canada. And we had Milos Raonic in the studio, and he said to Mats and I that he didn't have that many players to practice with at all. So he used to just take a bucket of balls and go and serve some. So how was it when you grew up? <laughs> yeah, tennis is definitely not the biggest sport in Canada. So, um, But we do have indoor courts, which are pretty quick. Mm. So I guess you could say it's a little similar to grass. But that's what I grew up on, indoor hard courts. So, yeah. um, but when I was 12 years old, I went to Florida to go practice there yeah. and I think that helped me a lot to get like you said a variety of players to practice mm -hmm. with and you know a really good coach I found in Florida and Nick and uh, being able to play outdoors all year round is very important because you know in Canada it snows quite a lot. Uh, what is it doing to tennis in Canada now because obviously you're an ice hockey nation I'm from <laughs> Sweden so I follow yep. that very closely <laughs> but you and Milos you're having such great success what, what do you feel it's doing for tennis in Canada and can you walk around at home still? I think the sport has grown in the past few years in popularity. Of course, hockey is, you know, the, the big sport in Canada, but um, recently, you know, people have really been in, tuning into tennis a lot more, and I think a lot of more kids have started playing, and to be someone to inspire them is very special to me. And, uh, you know, at home, yeah, of course, it's, you don't have many, you know, famous tennis players in Montreal. It's, it's, it's really crazy when I go back. I haven't been home in a while, though, so I'm enjoying my stay in Europe. Hopefully I can stay here um, the whole week. <laughs> We've got some shots of you up against Elise Corne, who is the player to have taken out Serena Williams. I mean, she's a feisty player, isn't she, Elise Corne? But what was it about the game that you brought out there today, do you think, that broke her down? She is a very feisty player and uh, a fighter, and it was really a battle out there. And I tried to really be aggressive, and tr it was important for me to try finish the points because she has really good, like, wheels, you know? She can run down a lot of balls, and I struggled a few times trying to finish the point, but I think overall um, I did it more successfully than not, so that was, that was good. And you're not afraid to come into the net, are you? You seem to <laughs> love volleying. I do, you know? I try to finish the points once in a while, especially on grass. I think it's, it's good to move forward. Not, you know, I don't serve in volley. I'm not quite like that but uh, when I have an opening I, I try to step up and go for it and, and do you watch a lot of tennis away from when you're playing on court do you study tapes and when you've got a big opponent coming up next do you kind of you know get the tapes out with your your coach and sort of study little patterns of play 
I enjoy watching tennis as a fan because I am a fan of the sport. So if it's on TV, I will watch it. But I let my coach do more of the studying and um, he'll just come back to me with kind of tactics and things mm -hmm. I should do against my opponent. But I won't really worry about that too much because at the end of the day, I really want to just focus on myself as well. Yeah. I want to ask you about Nick Saviano because he played when I was playing, although I'm not <laughs> quite as old as him, but very close. Um, Left-hander, of course. What, what, is, what has he helped you with the most? I first met Nick when I was 12 years old, and when I went to go train in Florida, he was my coach there. So I've pretty much I've known him for a long time. So we have you know a great relationship, and I think he's he's very good at all the aspects of the game, but especially with the technique. You know, he really cleaned up my game and the mental aspect as well. You know, he taught me it's really important to stay in the moment on the court no matter what. So I think uh, I've improved a lot mentally in the past few years because of that. Yeah. Now, am I right in thinking that you're named after a princess? Is that right? <laughs> it's funny. I'm getting asked that a lot here in England. Somebody told me that. Is that right? <laughs> that is true. Yes. My, I'm Eugenie and my twin sister is Beatrice. Wow. After the two it's an princesses. unusual name, oh, wow. isn't it? Yeah. So my parents, I think, were, you know, closet royalists and were very <laughs> <laughs> um, a little obsessed. I don't know. But I think they're nice traditional names yeah. that, you know, go through generations. My younger sister is Charlotte as well and my younger brother is William. So yeah. you like your name? Yeah, I, I like Jeannie, you know, I like yeah. shortening it like Jeannie in a bottle kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, Where, where's the Jeannie <laughs> army this year? Because we saw them down oh, yeah. in Australia. Are they here? The actual Jeannie army from Australia, no, but I think they do have plans to travel to some tournaments. But ever since then, I have had kind of mini genie armies who throw yes. me animals yeah, yeah. Um, at most of the cities I've been to. But I feel like because it's Wimbledon, people are a little more proper here. Yes. And I don't think, I think maybe there's a Wimbledon rule where you can't throw anything on the court. No. So it's, that's what I'm saying. That's what I think. That's why I think I haven't received any yet. But yeah. <laughs> what, what do you think of the fans here? Because they're very different to all around the world. Yeah, like at the Australian Open, you have, like, like you say, genie army, they're much louder. Yeah. France, they're quite harsh on the players, aren't they? If you, if you dare to question a I line I think they call, love you or hate you in France. Yes, exactly. <laughs> but here, they're very polite, aren't they? How would you describe the audience? Here? Yes, I would describe the audience as classy. I think they're very proper and really respect tennis and, you know, not too loud and things like that and it's different so I appreciate it when I'm here you know it's yeah. kind of a different atmosphere and you know just walking through like the members area to get onto center court yes. everything feels so proper I feel like I shouldn't even sweat in that area I'm like <laughs> dripping everywhere Quite right we don't have that here at Wimbledon <laughs> <laughs> dripping on the carpet um, no. so it's kind of a whole different stage here and it's, it's the most traditional tournament the most prestigious so I love it yeah now we always ask all the players that come to our studio we always ask them about the tennis but then we want to know what they get up to off the court you know some of them have said they like to go and visit art galleries or go shopping or whatever. What do you like to do? I like to be a normal 20-year-old. I would I would say teenager, but I have just turned 20, which was very devastating for me. <laughs> when I'm <laughs> when I'm back home, I spend time with my family. That's the most important thing for me because I don't see them that often. But you know, hang out at the mall, movies. Um, when I'm in Florida, I love going to the beach. That's yeah. my really that's where I really relax a lot. Yeah. But you know, I just just do normal things. Yeah, quite right. Now yes. I remember seeing you on uh, something on social media where you actually did a weather forecast in oh, Canada. I did. did. Did you enjoy it? And can you give us a weather? <laughs> forecast now please <laughs> it was a really cool experience yeah, a lot of work goes into you yeah. know showing people what the weather is like it's very hard and I got a kind of a little tutorial but then I was just thrown into it live yeah. you know it was it was very tough but it was really cool and the, the forecast right now is there's a hundred percent chance it's raining right yeah. now <laughs> <laughs> and it will probably continue a little bit and probably on and off during the day you know it's London it's Wimbledon you got to expect the rain tell me how I mean frustrating to some players and some players don't mind. How do you deal with, with rain delays? Because you seem very focused and very organized and disciplined. So, no, but you do. Well, when you haven't seen my room yet. When you're okay. playing a match, I mean, when I watch you on the. Because you were saying about the center court that it feels uh, so like you want to even sweat in there. But you're so disciplined, uh, it seems, on the court. Do you have an easy time to get up for matches even though there's been rain delays? It's tough. And what I think is look, it's the same for both players, so you can't complain about it. Uh, the other day I had a five hour rain delay um, in my third round match so I really just tried to rest on the couch uh, really save my energy because I want to give it all in the match and you know just just realize hey like you're playing Wimbledon a rain delay is not the end of the world and we've actually been lucky this whole week so we were due for a lot of rain so I think yeah it's coming <laughs> it, it's definitely raining now well thank you so much thank for you. coming to chat to us we really no wish you the very best luck.